Well, hey everyone. Thanks for joining me for Christ and Crafting. My name is Heidi Scott. This is DIY Dreaming. I'm so glad to have you join me on this episode. Um, we're going to do something different, completely different than what we've ever done here. And I really I hope that you like it. Um, we're going to be doing hammered hydrangeas. Okay, and this I do. I'm doing these my style, so of course you can change this up to whatever you would like. I am just using hydrangeas from my backyard. Um, all right, well this is what our project's going to look like. I'm just going to show you a quick peek, and then I'm going to take you through the whole thing, and then we're going to talk about hope. Um, there's a quote from Lady Bird Johnson that says, where flowers bloom, so does hope. And so I just felt led to talk a little bit about hydrangeas and then also about hope. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. All right, so this is the example that I wanna show you. And then I'm gonna show you how we do it. What do you guys think? Isn't that pretty? This is another example. And here is another one. Okay. And I have pounded about a hundred hydrangeas this morning, getting ready, trying to figure out what is going to work the best. Um, what, what gives you the best color? And then also, I think doing the little bit of outlining, this is just a, a previous scrapbooking pin around your hydrangeas, that that makes a big difference too. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you need watercolor paper. Heavier, the better. This is an extra large size. You don't have to have this extra, extra large. This is just the size that I have. It's Canson brand. Um, you can get this stuff at Walmart. It's not expensive, but the paper is textured and it's really, really thick. And it takes water uh, and um, uh, watercolors really nice. It does some interesting things with them. So that's the first thing that you need is watercolor paper. I don't think this is going to work with a piece of um, computer printer paper or notebook paper. Okay, so I have a bunch of it right here and I'm just gonna cut some pieces. The first few ones of these that I made, I tore. And what I found out doing that is that tearing this thick of watercolor paper is hard. It was harder than anything else. So I opted for the next ones, not to tear it, but just to cut it. Okay, I don't want it quite this long. Whatever size you do is completely optional. Whatever you want. Okay, good enough. So we're just gonna take some compute, uh, computer paper. We're just going to take some watercolor paper and I have a bunch of hydrangeas out of my yard. You guys and these hydrangeas came from a bush that we have that is gigantic. It did not bloom last year at all. It bloomed like crazy this year and I believe that we got this plant in 2005 I think it is when my father passed away. Um, a couple from our community group gave us one of those little grocery store, you know, small little hydrangeas, and I planted it. And so it's right by the door as you go out into our backyard. And every time I see it, I think about my dad. His name was Holly. It was actually Holland. But um, so I have a variety of different stages. They're starting to get a little brown. Um, these ones are from a different plant, but they're all pretty. Okay, 
and these are from the one that we're using. So I've just been kind of misting them a little bit to keep them fresh until I use them. And Oh, and here's another. These are from the, my dad's plant. And this is where they're starting to really turn. Um, oops, I just tore that. They're, you know, starting to turn color. Let me find a pretty one. So I've seen a lot of different tutorials on um, Pinterest and elsewhere of, some people call these pounded flowers, some people call them hammered flowers. Um, I've seen lots of different tutorials. And really, you can do them to suit your style, whatever that is. There's no specific way that you have to do them. This is a, these are bigger flowers. We're gonna start with these. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the flower off and then I'm gonna cut that stem really nice and short. And I'm just gonna put it on here. I could use some wax paper but I have found that it really does work better if you use the same kind of paper. Let's see which one do I want to use. And, um, oh my gosh, I've experimented so much. You can keep using the same little piece of paper over and over. So I've got my hydrangea down laying here and I'm just going to press it down and try to hold it still. Some of the tutorials out there say to tape it down, but I'm not doing that. Hi, Gail. Hey, Marilyn, how are you doing today? So, and then I'm just taking a trusty hammer. You want to hammer your flower enough that it releases the color, but not so much that it's unrecognizable. Okay, that's a little crazy, <laughs> but it'll work. So this is what we got. And I know it doesn't look like a hydrangea yet, but it will. And let's do one of these green ones. Cut the end off of it. We may do a few, a few different ones. Um, I've also found that if you do the flowers one at a time, that you can sense of where they are. You can feel on your paper. Make sure that you're hammering in the right area. Okay. Ooh, that one left a really nice impression. Okay, and let's use one of these lighter purple ones. These are pretty. Might end up using a couple of these ones. Nope, oh, this is my coming paper. it up and peek as you're going along. Okay, I got one part of it is a good impression. Um, that'll work. Okay, let me show you. All right, so let's set this one aside. If I need to, I'll use my heat gun. Let's do another one. I mean, these are so fun. And okay, so I was experimenting with what I have in my yard because I always say, use what you have whenever possible. Um, so I had a yellow flower that, um, when I did this to it, it was great. Let's see, do I have a piece of paper that has a, this one. This is a yellow, this is part of one of those um, daisy looking uh, flowers that have the black center. They're, ca they're called, um, well, I don't wanna say what the name of it is because some people might think that's offensive. Anyways. Um, so some flowers really do well and others not so great. The hydrangeas, I love them. I mean, they're probably not the best flower in the whole world to do, but this is what I wanted to do. So I'm making it work. 
And if you have hydrangeas, you should try it. I'm just trying to decide which, which one do I want to start with. Ooh, let's do one of these. And I experimented with, um, with spraying my paper with a little mist of water. I experimented with spraying the flowers. And I don't know. I think that I'm giving these hydrangeas about the best that they can do. easier. Oh, that was a good one. Oh my gosh, you can actually tell what it is. Um, what was I saying? With other, some other kind of, um, of plant, of flower, you might have a better result. Okay, sometimes when the um, hydrangeas have a prettier backside, I'm going to lay that down and try to pound that out right here. I have, ooh, that's pretty. There's one little spot. Oh, it's okay. Look at this. Um, this might seem strange to be hammering <laughs> on an episode of Christ and Crafting, but I have, um, I'm excited about this one. I have some good, really good Bible verses, and um, I have some interesting hydrangea facts to share. Okay, let's do another. I like the um, hydrangeas to be in threes or fives or sevens, just like anything else. It would be more visually pleasing. Ooh, that's much better. Okay, and I forgot on the other one. Let's do some leaves. So, I got some leaves out. I'm going to tell you something about these later. Um, so I hope you'll stay with me. Oops. Ow. I have hammered my fingers a few times. I'm going to also show you guys how to do the day children's watercolors that look like this and embellish just a little bit. So this is a fun craft. This is totally my kind of craft. Okay, I got an impression of a leaf. Exactly what I want. Now I'm just going to use the same one and put it down here. We'll see what we can get out of it there. So my husband was not too excited about this project. Um, because, I'm going to put this back and do a little bit more. Because he has um, that tinnitus stuff, and so his hearing is pretty sensitive. So he left, but he was not thrilled with me pounding in here. He was like, how much longer do you do that? I'm like, not too much longer. Okay, we need one more leaf. She's a little one. Billy, I just want a little bit of green. Okay, perfect. So this does not really look like a hydrangea yet, but it will in a few minutes. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to look like this. And you can make any kind of greeting card. If you wanted to do a bigger piece, you could frame it. Um, 
you can also do this technique on fabric, although I haven't tried that yet, so I don't have any experience. Um, I just put my initials in the bottom corner and I wrote the word hope in my terrible handwriting in the upper corner. This was one that I made maybe second and it did not have a lot of color and I did not know to do the leaves yet. So I just imagined them and it turned out pretty, I think. And then this was one where I had some hydrangeas that I painted a little bit. I'll show you how. And uh, this funny little um, flower that has teeny little pink buds. Okay, we need to put some green on this one. And then I'm going to show you this two ways. I'm going to show you how to do it where you just um, draw it in. And then I'm going to show you how to do it where you uh, do some watercolors on it. Oh, Ginger says she did this back in the 70s, but she'd forgotten all about it. Hey, Linda, you can always go back and watch on replay if you would like. Um, this is a, a pretty cool craft, I think. Hydrangea leaves are big, so that's why I'm, I'm not choosing some teeny little leaves from another A distinctive jagged whoo that's pretty jagged um, corner a jagged edge I just want a little bit of color on these I'll do just a teeny bit right here use them multiple times because you just want a teeny tiny little impression of it okay so that's the first step and these are our first two um, hydrangea hammered hydrangea prints all right now the next step is to clean off my desk a little bit so we can paint here let's don't get rid of these And um, I would be careful with this project that you don't leave your little bits out that the animals could get or that might get wet and stain your, your surface that you're working on. Right. Here is a new, or new-ish, not completely new, um, Board. Okay, so let me see. Which one am I going to want to color? They're both pretty awesome. I don't know that I really need to, but I want to show you guys how to do that. So, I think we'll do this one first, and we'll watercolor it just a little bit. All right, hydrangeas have an interesting shape to them, and what I did before I got started um, was I googled... Um, hydrangea outline drawing and they have four like little petals each one of the little ones each one of these little pieces have four little petals and the tops of them are kind of pointed and sometimes they'll have a little indent and then the center of them they sometimes have these little teeny um Sometimes they have these little teeny things in them. So they're not quite like a clover, but okay. And I'm just using this kind of a marker because I tried several others and when I was doing watercoloring, they all bled. So I'm going to imagine where my hydrangea is and you're um you don't have to get this exactly right it does not matter
Okay, so there's the outline of that one. It doesn't look like anything great. Now I'm going to put some circles just in the center. And color them in just a little bit. And then I'm going to draw like the creases. coming out from the center. And then I'm gonna put a couple little creases and on some of these, a little kind of dark spot on the ends of these little flower petals. All right, let's do another one. Let's do this big one. And I have to remember how big it was. This one's hard because it's kind of underneath some leaves a little bit. Okay, so here's the outline. For those of you that are like really artistic, you could probably do something amazing. This is me. I have no artistic abilities. I'm just sort of copy, copying this idea um, the best I can. Some hydrangeas just have one little thing in the center that's bigger. Some have them that are like uh, ovals and some have just a whole bunch of little ones. Okay, so we did the center. I'm gonna darken it in just a little bit. And now I'm going to do the And I hope you can see that right here, none of the juice from the hydrangea came out. I probably didn't hammer in that spot, but it doesn't matter. I'm just imagining where it is. And that's part of what is pretty about this, I think, is um, you know having some areas that have nothing. Okay, we have one more hydrangea, this little one, and then we'll do the leaves. So what do you guys think so far? I wanted to do something completely different today that we had never done and I am a complete flower um, lover slash nut. <laughs> I'm just trying to remake, figure out where this would have been. Um, so, and I've been seeing this idea on Pinterest for a little while, and I just decided to do it my style, which is with these hydrangeas, because then I could talk about hope. And it's, it's always so beautiful every week when I do Christ and Crafting, how God brings everything together, usually at the very last minute. I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Initially, I really thought I was gonna talk about something different. Um, and I did initially have a different craft plan too, but then the supplies for that didn't arrive in time, so. Okay, so I did the center. And now I'm gonna just do these little. And the outside part. All right, so there are three hydrangeas. And now you can see them, right? Let me show this uh, one to the next to you. 
Now you can tell that they're flowers. Okay, now let's do the leaves. And the leaves on hydrangeas look like this. They're, whoops, do I have any new ones? Yes, I do. This is what they look like. They're kind of jaggedy, and then they have a lot of veins. Make the center of this a little bit more pronounced. Okay, there's one leaf going off of the piece of watercolor paper. Tell me what you guys think. If you like this idea and you could see yourself doing this, it's virtually free. I already had everything I needed. Um, if you think you could imagine yourself doing something like this, uh, do it this. That's a heart. Um, and why don't you tell me what kind of flowers you have in your yard that you could use? I have um, knockout roses. I have some lavender, but it's not really in bloom. I have some salvia, I think. It's not really in bloom. I have a gorgeous clematis, but it's already bloomed and it's done for the year. I have these hydrangeas, lots of them. Um, and then I have this bush that has these teeny tiny little pink things. I have a big mound of the flowers that look like yellow daisies with black centers. Um, so, and I don't know the names of all of those because although I love flowers, I, um, our ground is like cement here in Georgia, so I don't love gardening. Isn't that sad? <laughs> okay. So I don't know all the names of them. Oh, and in the spring, when we, when we did our backyard, I always wanted some forsythia. because I love, my mom had that and I loved them. So they planted like six mounds of them with just, they had like three stalks. And over the last, I don't know how many years, 10 years, now they're, they're beautiful in the spring. Okay, so I'm just working on my leaves. And I will get pictures of these um, up close when we're all done here. Okay, I'm going to do that center part. This is pretty pretty that I don't know that it really even needs any painting, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay, one more leaf, and then we'll move on. We'll do the painting, and then we'll do the next one. And the leaves are just, you know, little lines out and squiggles on them. This is a great project for somebody who has a very shaky hand like me. <laughs> and also somebody who's not naturally artistic. Okay, so we could come back. Here it is. What do you think? Wouldn't this be pretty on a card? Let me show you. These are, I showed these the other week. They're David Tudiera brand. I believe I got these at Joann's. 
their size A7. And these are natural, and it came 12 envelopes and 12 cards when I got it. And it was probably 50% off. I probably paid around four or five dollars for it. So each one of these cards is less than 50 cents. Um, and you can make something so special and send it to someone rather than buying a store-bought card. I just think that's so much nicer. I don't know, that's so pretty. I almost don't want to paint it. Um, I do want to put my initial on it and I want to write a word. I wish I had beautiful handwriting. Okay, let's, what the heck, let's paint just a little bit. Okay. Let me look around here. Do I have any others that I've done that we could paint? Because honestly, this is so pretty. I don't wanna mess it up. It turned out fabulous. Okay, here's one. Here's three flowers that I did. Oh, I'm gonna quickly outline them. Um, they don't have, this one doesn't have leaves, but that's okay. Okay. It's interesting how different each one of these, look, some of them, the leaves are, or not the leaves, but the little petals are completely, um, spread apart and some of them have bigger ones that are more clumped together. This will be perfect for me to show you on this one. do a very good job on this last one. Okay, here is this, and here's a little stem. Let's get that. Oops. And I'm so glad you caught me. Hi, Laura. Hey, Diane. So this is what we're going to watercolor with. All right, I don't have any fancy wa actual watercolors. I don't know, maybe you do. If you do, then use those. If you don't, <laughs> do you have something like this? This was my little boy's. I have a whole drawer full of this kind of stuff, funny markers and stuff, and I was like, I know I have some old watercolors somewhere. Look how yucky they are. But it does not matter, one single bit. Or you guys can see. You know, let me pull my camera down just a little bit because this is something that I kind of want you to see more up close. And I'm probably gonna make you seasick or tip it sideways. Okay, this works. Let's get a new one and let's use the back so that you can see. Just got a new package. Oh, this is open already. No, it isn't. I found that it's easier to see when you have a background that's a different color than what you're working on. And so sometimes I work on the front of these cake boards, and sometimes I work on the round back of them. Walmart, you get four for around $4. All right, and I have just a basic artist brush. It's not anything fancy. And what I'm going to do to get started is I just have this little mister, and this is just regular water in here, and I'm just gonna give like one or 
maybe two pumps. Okay, and then we're going to get our color, and you really don't need to get very much. So, these hydrangeas are kind of purple with an interesting green, and the green I like is this one. It's kind of an olive color green or a dark green. I don't know, but there's hardly any of it. There's plenty, though. Use what you have whenever possible. That's what I always say. So, oops, I don't have enough on there. So I'm just going to lay some in here. And then we're going to pick some purple. And when you're working on watercolor paper, if it's wet enough, this doesn't quite look wet enough, it will do this really cool bleeding thing. I'm gonna just dab it just a teeny bit. So these started out with some color from the actual hydrangea petals, but I just wanted to enhance that a little bit. Oops, that's way too much water. And show you that you can do that. All right. Okay. See where my biggest chances of running are. So that is pretty too, but personally, I like this idea better. The deeper the shade of um, flower you have, the, the more intensely pigmented it is, the better it will transfer. All right, should we finish this one or should we just, I think let me just show you how this would look. We'll put it on a card. And then we will go into the Bible. Okay, um, and I just wrote in my messy handwriting, hope, in one corner, and then I put a little HS down at the bottom. And I'm using fancy, permanent, double-sided tape. It's not fancy at all. And I'm just going to put one across the top, and one across the bottom. And then we are going to make sure our card is opening the right way. Okay, tell me, how beautiful is that? I wish you could see it in person because it really is amazing. Let's see, where's the other one that I made that's like this? Aren't they pretty? And the only part that will make you nervous at all is doing the pin part. But you just got to give yourself permission to just go for it. Um, you get the impression of what this is, whether you do that shape perfectly or not. And if it doesn't look like a hydrangea, but it looks like some other pretty flower, well, there's no wrong in that. Um, I did see that lots of people on Pinterest used uh, purple pansies that had a yellow center, and they were gorgeous, but I don't have any of those in my yard. Okay, so here's one that I did. Um, let's see if that opens this way. 
and it barely has any color on it. This is when I was experimenting to see if I could figure out what the leaves are like. And then here's another one. And the hardest thing about doing these is ripping the paper. So try it on a couple and see what you think. And then if you don't like that, oh, here's another one that I did. If you don't, if it's hard and it hurts your fingers <laughs> like it does mine, then you don't have to. But I like this style better anyways. What do you guys think? All right, let me put my camera back and we will. I hope you'll stay with me because I have some interesting facts to share with you about hydrangeas. Things that I was like, I did not know that. Um, yeah, and then I have some good Bible verses and some good stuff to say about hope. Let's so move this over so it's not my camera. Okay. If you want to get a quick screenshot, this might be a good time. Oh, I'm tipped over. Okay, let me just get this a little bit higher. Sorry. Technology is wonderful and awful for me all at the same time. Which way do I need to go? Okay. Oh my word, I'm just making it worse. <laughs> I'm so sorry. One more adjustment and then I'll leave it alone. Whatever it ends up on is what we'll do. Yeah, that's better. So these, if you just hopped on, this is what we made. Um, I'm calling these hammered hydrangeas of hope. All H H H. Hope. And this is just my take on it. I'm sure you can do something equally wonderful with whatever kind of yard of flowers that you have in your yard and with your style. So I would love to see pictures if you do. Um, okay, so how I ended up on the idea of talking about hope for this part of Christ in Crafting was when I was reading some quotes um, that famous people had said about flowers. And Lady Bird Johnson said, where flowers bloom, so does hope. I thought, yeah, where flowers do bloom, that is uh, hope because in the winter there's nothing there it looks all dead and somebody had the hope of spring and summer to plant in the spring and to bring that dead back to life uh, with flowers so flowers really are a very good um, example of hope and oh, let me give you the hydrangea facts first Okay, did you know that hydrangeas can live up to 50 years? Um, There's 75 different species, and probably most of you knew this, but you might not have known the specifics about it. Some hydrangeas are more purpley blue, other hydrangeas are more pink. And which way they go depends on the acidic, how acidic <laughs> the soil is that they're growing in. So. If it's pink, if your hydrangeas are pink, then your soil is less acidic. If they're blue or purpley, then it's more acidic. And you can change the color of your hydrangeas. The easiest one, I guess, is to go from pink to blue just by helping your soil to become more acidic. And you can do that by putting, adding, you know, tilling it and putting coffee grounds there, citrus peels, and crushed eggs. Did you know that? I thought that was pretty cool. 
Um, the other fact that I had no idea about is that the hydrangeas are poisonous. <laughs> the leaves, the leaves are what are poisonous and they have something that is, um, they release cyanide. And that sounds horrible. They're, it's usually not dangerous, but you don't want anyone making a salad out of hydrangea leaves or eating them. And if you're gonna do this project and you have pets or anything, just make sure you get everything picked up when you're all done. Uh, but it's not gonna get on your fingers or, you know, it's, it's not usually deadly and I'm, I feel confident that I will not be dying because I've pounded hydrangea leaves today. Okay, so the ones that we worked on, like I said before, they were given to me, I think in 2005. I have this mental block, I can't remember what year my dad passed away for sure. Um, and it's a long, sad story that I'll tell you some other time. Um, and he was young, that's really sad too. Um, and so we were in this community group and one of the couples gave us one of these little plants that has the pink foil on the bottom of it from the grocery store, a hydrangea. And I put it in the ground and it, it was there in this other spot for a couple of years and it wasn't doing well. So I decided to move it closer to the house and oh my goodness, this bush, it's a bush, it's huge. And um, last year it didn't bloom at all, it was just woody sticks. At some point the little stalks get really thick and they're like hard wood. Um, but it bloomed like crazy this year, so I don't know what that means. Okay, so before I go into the Bible, let me just say a quick prayer, and then we will dig in. And if you need to leave, um, come back later and watch this uh, on replay while you're washing the dishes or curling your hair or making the beds or something. Because um, I think this, I have some good stuff to share. And there's nothing really necessarily to see, but stay with me if you can. And if you can't, just come back and listen to the replay um, at a later time. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for Sundays. Lord, thank you so much for the beautiful flowers that you gave us for our enjoyment and to beautify your creation. Lord, each one is so different, so unique, and it's just so amazing to think that you specifically designed each one of those, those species of different flowers and different living things on the earth. Um, I'm trying to think, Lord, of the, the verse, but uh, you are enormous. <sighs> You're, oh my gosh, just there's no, no border to you, and then you care about this little teeniest thing in a flower. And the verse I'm thinking of, Lord, is that the heavens declare your majesty, your hands um, proclaim your handiwork, something like that. That verse always makes me feel kind of weepy, just because I'm just realizing that you're personal, and yet you're the creator of the universe, the galaxies, everything. And you're showing us that you did it in nature, in science, uh, in our human bodies, in flowers, in everything. It wasn't a cosmic accident, Lord. And I just thank you for showing us those little touches of your creativity that can give us hope and inspire us. And Lord, as I go into this now, I just ask that you'll give me the words to say and that they'll land where you want them to land with the people who are watching or listening. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, so, you know, the word hope is thrown around a lot. I am guilty of that all the time. I say, I hope you'll join me <laughs> for my Facebook Live. I hope that my package comes in time for Sunday. I hope it won't rain today. 
and I'm sure you do too. I mean, it's a big part of our vocabulary, the word hope. Um, so it has two different definitions, and I just want to think about the biblical definition of that word a little bit. But first, let's talk about what it means in our common parlance, what we say. So a hope um, generally conveys doubt. I hope it won't rain today. That's conveying some doubt. I don't know whether it will or won't, but I wish that it wouldn't. Um, my writing's teeny, I can't remember what I wrote. The strength of that kind of hope depends on the person's desire in some instances. Like, I hope I can lose 10 pounds <laughs> or 20 pounds. Uh, I don't have a very good willpower in that department. So the strength of that hope is not very strong because it depends on me. Um, the opposite almost is true for hope in a biblical sense. And what it is, is it's a confident expectation. I love that. A confident expectation of what God has promised. And the strength of that kind of hope doesn't depend on us. It depends on God's faithfulness. Isn't that neat? Um, it's the hope that doesn't disappoint. It's not a feeling. Um, it carries no doubt, biblical hope. Because God is good. God has a good plan for us. God keeps his promises. And God doesn't change with a whim like we do. Um, all of your days were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before you were created, before God knit you together in your mother's womb. And if you're a believer in Christ, your name is engraved in the Lord's palm. And that just, oh, uh, the imagery of that just really gets me. So let's go to a couple Bible verses and just look at that. We're going to go to Hebrews 11.11, 11. and if you um, have ever been in a Bible study or like done a devotional or anything, I feel like you've probably heard this verse, because it's a pretty um, important one, and it's pretty well known. Okay, so this is in the book of Hebrews. Oh, and by the way, I say this every week. But then I get questions, and I don't want any questions like this to go unanswered. I am using my life application study Bible that I've had, uh, I don't know, 22, 23 years, something like that. It's nothing fancy. My husband gave it to me when we for Christmas the first year we moved to Georgia. Um, what I love about this Bible is that I have written my life in it. And um, those thoughts that were important to me when I wrote them in my Bible, they, they bring back such good, confident expectation in God. Um, it's messy, like everything else I do, but that doesn't matter. Um, and it is the most, it's my most val valued possession, a thing. It's the only thing I would care if I lost, if there was a fire or a building collapse or some, a flood or some horrible thing. Um, so, and mine is in the NIV translation, New International Version. So I recommend really that if you don't have a paper Bible, you should get one. And I posted information last week about an online source where you can get them and they're not expensive. Um, and they're this uh, life application study Bible, and they have them in, in a bunch of different translations. So I'll try to dig that out and put that in the comments in case there's somebody watching here who says, okay, I, she's got me. I definitely need to get a paper Bible. Um, I don't know. When I was growing up, I didn't think people actually read their Bibles. I thought that was something reserved for the minister or the pastor or the preacher or the priest, the head of the church. I didn't, did not grow up realizing that you could read your Bible and that God could speak to you through it um, until, I don't know, 
20 something years ago. Uh, anyways, I'm off on a tangent. But I really do encourage you to get a paper Bible and then to write your life in it. You're, if you have descendants, children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, I think that this would be a treasured possession for them too. I hope so. Okay, so we're going to Hebrews 11. Verse one. Oh, and I have notes here that are awesome. Okay, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And the Holy Spirit is really what clinches it. But I have written in my Bible, probably I had a, was at two different sermons or it came up a couple different times. And um, I wrote, faith equals absolute certainty in the character and competency of God. Absolute certainty. And um, here's another one. I use the same words. Absolute certainty that God is who he says he is and he, he will do what he says he will do. Um, so, um, sure, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In the notes here, it says these two words describe faith, sure and certain. These two qualities need a secure beginning and ending point. The beginning point of faith is believing in God's character. He is who he says he is. Uh, when we believe, the end point is believing in God's promises that he will do what he says he will do. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see those promises materializing yet, we demonstrate true faith. Um, and that is what hope is from a bi biblical definition. Let's go now to Romans 15. This isn't going to be long, so if you're getting tired of me talking, I won't be talking too much longer, I promise. Okay, Romans. Uh, where are you? Here we go. Romans chapter 15. Verse 23. No, that's not right. It's 13. It's Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And this is just a verse uh, in, in this Bible. In, um, this was a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, to the Roman church. And he says, may the God of hope, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I wrote down here, Christian joy is a certainty, certainty that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, so God is a God of hope. Um, nothing surprises him. Nothing is beyond his control. Nothing is outside of his plan. And we know what his character is. His character is good and loving. He cares for us. My word. He loves us so much that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son Christ to die for us, to pay for our sins, to make us be in right standing so that we could have a personal relationship with him. This is a God who loves us and who is good. And he has a good plan. Um, so he is a God of hope. And if you don't really know God, then it's hard to, to know what his character is, and it's hard to know if you can trust him. But you gotta start somewhere. So if you know of God, but you don't really know him personally yet, and you don't really know his son, Jesus Christ, you just gotta start somewhere and get a Bible. 
read the um, book of John and start there. And then find someone in your life that is a believer that you can ask your questions. Okay, I'm gonna go to that super common uh, verse that we've all heard, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And I'm gonna read that. And then I have one other quick verse to share. Okay. So, uh, in this, the prophet, I think this was the prophet Jeremiah talking, he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me, but you have to seek him to find him. And you have to pray and speak to him for him to listen. So you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? That's that whole uh, verse and not just like one little sentence. And then the last one is back in Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 23. I love this verse. I feel like we've done a, a Christ and crafting on this once before. Okay, and this says, let us hold unswervingly unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful so let's hold on unswervingly to the faith that we have because not because of us like in the in the everyday language uh, definition of hope that conveys some doubt that's a wish um, that is not certain. Um, so let us hold unswervingly to the hope, the biblical hope, the hope that doesn't depend on us, but it depends on God's character and being able to trust him. And it carries no doubt. It's not just a feeling or a whim. Let's hold unswervingly to the hope we profess because he who promised God is faithful. So, um, the last thing I want to say before I pray is that biblical hope is, uh, it's not a, well, I hope so. It's a, I know so. And, anyways, you need to know your father and one great way to get to know him is by reading his word he will speak to you through it it's amazing and you'll read a verse one year and he'll talk to you about something going on in your life and then five years later you'll read it again and he'll speak to you in a different way it's just oh, it's just amazing and then you can get to know him by attending church services by praying by surrounding yourself with other believers and having conversations, uh, listening to Christian music. I mean, there's a ton of different things that you can do watching Christ and crafting, or just crafting in general with me here at DIY Dreaming, because I do talk about my faith. I talk about the hope, the unswerving hope that I have all the time. And I hope that is an encouragement to you. Um, so, Biblical hope is not a, well, I hope so. It's a, I know so. All right, let me pray. And then um, I'm going to get pictures of our projects. If you are joining late, we hammered hydrangea petals on these little pieces of watercolor paper. And then we just outlined them with like this little, what is this called? Little micron pin. And aren't they pretty? And I wrote the word hope in each corner. Okay. 
Heavenly Father, thank you, first of all, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that um, you preserved it, that it's, it was useful when you wrote it, and it was applicable to the times that were, but it's, it's timeless. It's still useful. It's still applicable, even to our very different world that we live in. And thank you, Lord, that, that you speak to us through it. Thank you that uh, you have deposited your Holy Spirit in us when we became Christ followers. And that the Holy Spirit will help us to understand what you would have us to understand from your word. So I just thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I just thank you so much for Christ and crafting. I thank you for giving me the love of crafting. And I thank you for helping me to stumble into being able to do Christ and crafting. And thank you for giving me the courage, little by little, to be more bold with my faith and to pray and to go into the Bible. Those were not easy for me, but you gave me the, the strength and encouragement to do it. So I thank you, Lord, for those. And I thank you so much for all these people that are watching. Lord, I pray that what, uh, what we talked about today and that the project will land where you want it to land with these people, that it will be an encouragement, that maybe it will be something that lights a fire in someone out there to get to know you or to get to know you better or to get reacquainted with you if they've been gone for a little while. Um, and then I pray that they will have the unswerving hope that you say we can have in the Bible. Lord, um, I don't know what everyone is going through, but I do know that everybody is going through things. Everyone. Because we're here on earth. We're not in our final destination with you. And things are hard, and this word is this world is broken and hurting, and oh, it's it can be difficult sometimes. So while I don't know what each person is going through who's watching, you do. You know every detail of it. You know every hair on that person's head. You created them in their mother's womb. You have a purpose and a plan for each one of them. And your plan is good because you are a good God. So I just pray that you will let those people feel your presence, that you will give those people a real sense of biblical hope. And if they don't know you yet, or don't know you well, just that you'll, you'll draw them to you, Father. So I lift up all the prayer requests out there. Uh, and I just um, pray that we will all have safe and meaningful weeks and that you will be with us. And I pray all of this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So I know that was kind of long, this whole thing has been kind of long, but I just really like these projects. This, these do not say crafty to me. Although they're not professional, they are definitely artistic and they were easy. So if you decide to do something, some smashed or pounded or hammered, whatever, however you want to call it, flowers, I want to see pictures for sure and um, you can put those pictures here in these comments or you can put them over at Dreamy DIY. Um, if there's something that I can be specifically praying for you this week, you can send me a personal message with that um, or you can put that here in the comments if it's not personal or if it's not something that you wouldn't want other people to read. And anyways, it was a good Christ in crafting. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it will be a blessing to you. And I am just going to say goodbye for now, and I will get pictures of our projects. If you joined in late, uh, go back and watch the replay. Oh, and oh, this is important. If you have friends 
or family or acquaintances, or you know somebody who you just have that feeling that um, they are seeking, they're searching. They know that you have something different if you're a Christ follower. If you have those kind of people in your life, Feel free to sprinkle this to your social media or just tell them about DIY dreaming or just tell them if they don't like crafts, tell them just to watch the last half of Christ in Crafting. Um, that would be awful. That would be awesome if you would do that. Alrighty, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for all those hearts. And thank you for all the people who shared stars. And thank you for all the people who commented. And thank you for all the people who sprinkled. Um, thank you for all the people who encouraged me during this craft project. Uh, I just thank you guys. And I'm gonna say goodbye now. Have a great rest of your day.